Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani, and this morning I'm happy to be alongside Cyril Abaku, um, who's senior researcher at TBC News. He's been away for a while, and I'm delighted to have him back. <laughs> Welcome back, Cyril. Yes, good morning, viewer. I'm glad to be on Uh you, you, you were on paternity leave. <laughs> 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 well, because people wonder. You well, didn't tell us why now. The, the funny thing is with COVID, people can't travel. So <laughs> <laughs> we deserve to stay here. Good to have you back, Thank Cyril. You. Thank you. Um, you know, you know, but I'm sure you were keeping abreast of the news all sure. the while. Um, let's start off um, this morning with the visit yesterday, yesterday evening, of the APC caretaker committee uh, to, you know, Ashwaju Bola Med uh, Tinubu at his um, uh, residence. Um... Well, first of all, you know there's been speculation about them being out of sorts between the president and uh, mm -hmm. and Ashwaju. Mm -hmm. Of course, the point has been made in, immediately uh, by spokespeople for the president and the presidency that there is no such thing. Ashwaju himself has done also, he's, he's put a, a communication out there not just as an interview, uh, uh, in writing, that there's absolutely nothing to all of this. I, people can just conjecture something out of nothing. So that's what we have. And then, now that we have this meeting, um, this visit, now that we have this visit, uh, that would sort of be underlining, wouldn't it? Um, the position of both parties, the president and Ashwaju, it would be underlining that we've heard it before, and um, this is an indication of what's going on. You know, the one, one danger, one subtle danger of public commentary is the sometimes oversimplification of going on in a political space. People look at and say, okay, because there's been a change in Baton. Mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in okay, Baton, that's the caretaker committee yes, arriving at Shwaju's yes, residence yesterday. It, it must mean that there, there's some kind of conflict in the party. But the, the reality is that it is not as simple as that. And this only goes to tell you that this is an evolving situation. For instance, I'll, I'll, I'll give a, a, very, a very good instance. This meeting could have taken place virtually, but it didn't. It had to be done man to man, face to face, if that is the word to use, which only goes to show you how much honor is being accorded to whom honor is due. And so we need to take our bearing, and, and specifically for, for some of us who are not party members, who are mere disinterested observers. You cannot draw such simple conclusions and say because there's been a change in leadership of the party, because X didn't go to Y and because Y didn't go to Z, therefore the whole, the whole, the whole of, the, of, of the alphabet has, has grown out of gear. It is not true. There is, there is a lot we can learn when it comes to patience, when it comes to keenly observing what is going on and not rushing into, and not rushing into conclusions while it is still morning, you know, while, 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 while um, events are still unfolding. And so I think that what the committee has done is the best thing to do. The APC was formed in 2013 as a, as, as, as a combination, if you like, of several political blocks. And so this idea of broad-based consultations, this idea of um, fellow feeling, this idea of consensus building will always be there. It pays nobody to wake up in the morning and say, because of what happened last night, the party is gone. It is not gone. And I think that it only goes to this. The, the caretaker chairman didn't send the delegation. He didn't also send representatives. He mm -hmm. came down there by himself. Mm -hmm. Governor Sonwulu was there. Um, my, uh, the, the, the chairman he, himself was there. His counterpart from, from, uh, um, from Kebi. I mean, the cream of the people that you would have thought have wrested power, as it were, were all there. And I think it only goes to tell us that, look, if there was something we couldn't believe in the past, there is something we can hold on to in the present. And to say that, as I said earlier, honor will continue to be given to whom honor is due. Indeed. And that in the days to come, we can only hope that what bodes well for the party will, bode, will also bode well for Nigerians. And this is what I mean, simply. The public cynicism that we feel sometimes about politicians, political parties, the things they be, their policies, and so on, the reality is that the, in the political process, we are partakers. We cannot stand by and be idle observers. We, we must all participate in the process, whether it is direct or indirect. And so if you don't realize that if the APC has issues within itself, uh, within, within it, it affects Nigeria as a country, you're, you're sorely mistaken. 
even if you don't like the party or you're you, you, you not a member of the party, mm -hmm. you owe it to yourself, mm -hmm. to posterity, mm -hmm. and to the broader section of Nigerians to say that the APC should succeed because when they succeed, the whole of Nigeria also succeeds. Mm -hmm. And so, what we saw yesterday was just perhaps one stroke to silence certain people and say, you thought it was all done and dusted. What you see today, what can you say about it? The gainsaying and the naysaying should not be put to rest, at least for now. And let's hope that, you know, going forward, going, move, move, moving forward, better things will unfold. Indeed. Not but so much for selfish reasons, but for the broader numbers of Nigerians. And, and stability of the party. Exactly. Uh, because, uh, you know, even though uh, Ashwaju Tinubu had written, you know, into earlier that 2023 is so far away for those who are talking of, of that date, uh, in, in terms of, um, in the context of all the, what has to be done, all the work on ground now that has to be done, very, very important work. And so he's not even thinking uh, uh, that far ahead. Uh, maybe this is also uh, a part of all of that, that look, people can just make up stuff and the party, well, for politicians anyway, even if 2023 is seen as being a bit far away, uh, still, it's going to come and you must approach it with on a, on a solid, united front. If you asked me, I would say that that is quite pivotal and it is something we cannot take our eyes from. If our vision is received from that um, particular chip, 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 chip in the bargain, we, we fool ourselves. But the reality is that from careful, objective observation, what we cannot afford to take out of the um, the puzzle is the fact that the committee is not going to choose the party's candidate for the next election. What the party is, even, what the committee is even going to do for now is to organize a convention that should be able to provide leadership for the party in a way and manner that will be a pointer to the fact that the lessons from the bifurcations and the uh, what is this for the and the schisms of the past will not be repeated. You, we all saw what happened. Adam So Shemole, Victor Giadom, and so on. The mismanagement of political interests within a party as big as the APC could lead to all manner of, you know, uh, could, could throw up serious cataclysms in the polity. And so the responsibility now lies on this uh, on the on the committee to pro, to organize a credible to restore organization actually to restore a credible um, ESCO body for the party, a, 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 a new NWC, a National Working Committee for the party, that will now pilot, the, I think it is from what happens in six months' time, that, so all, in my assessment, all of these constitutions are ahead of the, the, the convention. It is what happens okay. from then on, uh -huh. that we cannot begin to say, okay, this is Peter, this is Paul, <laughs> this is James, okay. this is John, okay. and so on. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. Thank you for calling in. Good morning, Uncle Eric. Thank you for calling in. Good morning. Greetings to Siri Lafoy. Yes, yeah. yeah, good morning, sir. Uncle Eric, uh, I will remain skeptical as long as this subject is concerned. You know, I'm an ardent supporter of Mr. President, but truth must be told. When an error is committed, if you love somebody, you should tell him to retrace that he has made a mistake. I am still skeptical about the motive of all these. They say action speaks louder than words. The action that has been taken is like what I'm seeing now. Uh, 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 this mistake is going to backfire. Let us see how we can address it. That's what I'm seeing. I may be wrong, but that is what I can see on ground. Mm. Why was there no consultation with Asuaju beforehand? If he is actually the national leader of the party, why was there no consultation? And now a committee is being sent to him to pacify him. I still have my doubts as to the credibility of the moves. Quote me any day. Until you prove me wrong, I am still nursing my doubts about the credibility of these moves. Let events tell us later. All but right. I feel that the writing was not done. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you very much uh, for calling in, Mr. George. Uh, it's an interesting perspective. Um, 
you know, because I'm, look, let it be said, the, the, the polity, uh, no, well, let me not say the polity, the whole commentary community was rife with uh, different interpretations. Uh, and it was in the light of that, perhaps, that Garabai Shehu first had a need to speak on behalf of his principal, that he, he's hearing things going on as is his job to be hearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he quickly gave the, the, uh, the light to it. And then in the fullness of time, when Ashwaju did then speak, he also, you know, told that line. Uh, not that he, w it's not as if he wasn't critical of certain aspects. But then, uh, you know, as uh, statesmen, you know, often uh, do speak, um, he, he was very light on blame and, um, uh, uh, you know, quite firm on the advantages that had been brought to the party. He, he said mistakes had been made, mm -hmm. you know, he, he said it, uh, uh, but... You know, he didn't, you know, uh, he didn't put them in any particular place apart from the, the main casualties that perhaps if things had been done earlier. He, he made mention of all of that. But as Mr. George is saying, he very well might not be alone. He, might, he very well might not be a lone voice, as a more fact. Uh, but let, we have another caller. Good morning. Thank you very much for calling in. Good morning, everybody, and uh, good morning to your colleague there. Indeed. Thank you very much yeah. for calling in. Uh, illegality begets illegality. Hmm. The way they dissolve the, the, uh, the legislation is wrong. The National Working Committee is wrong. And uh, no, the consultation was very narrow for the president. He consulted with only seven governors and some saying that he got a legal advice, which is uh, this is judicial advice coming from Malami. So it is wrong. So with that thing, with that thing that happened, with that general consultation, at least within the leadership, and not only that, the second thing is that we have, we have a rule guiding us, that is the constitution of our party. That constitution must be followed to the letters. Every position where we said the BOT, everything, if it had been in place, all this problem would not have even got to worry. The, the BOT would have been able to solve it. And we advise them, when they are coming up with a new setup now, they should be able to follow the constitution properly, constitution of our party, properly, and make sure that every position that is allowed in the constitution of the party is filled so that each individual position have duty to perform for the party. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, Mr. Femi. Indeed, that's another interest, um, uh, Femi calling in as a party member. Uh, the, it, it, the, the, it, it probably is realized that even on the day that the news broke and we spoke with commentators, members of APC in Abuja, you know, we, we got the impression that it did leave something of a sour taste in the mouth. Uh, although, the main, shall we say, person concerned, uh, when he came along, he was a lot more magnanimous than all of that, saying that, you know, uh, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the relationship and, uh, and all of that. But that's a major interest, the party itself. Uh, l let's see what, what, what the take is of um, our man, uh, Ayo Ozubaku, our political, the political correspondent. Uh, Ayo, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, Yori. Okay. Thank you very much for, co for coming on. Um, well, if you've been following the program, uh, the uh, meeting of the uh, caretaker committee yesterday to the national leader, Ajwa uh, Ajibola Ahmed Tinubu, you know, what, what do you have of how it is being seen? There are those, for instance, just taking the comments that we've got this morning, saying that, well, this is sort of testimony to the fact that there's a realization that uh, a wrong move, move was made, and now this is some sort of a, a reapprochement to the situation. And um, is it as complicated as that? What, what's your take? You're talking about, you know, the setting up of the All Progressive Congress. When you talk about the legacy parties that came together, that actually formed the All Progressive Congress, um, the Action Congress of Nigeria, which is the ACN, forms, um, 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 it came with um, CPC, and fused with CPC, AMPP, and a part of ABGA. And it was primarily driven by the ACN, ACM end, 
to make sure that the APC, they come together, and by that time, CPC still had a Nasarawa state alone. I remember that time, ACM went into that accord with six states, six state governors, and it shows strength. So at the end of the day, we didn't have senior partners, we didn't have junior partners. It's the legacy party fused together, and it became the All Progressive Congress. You will not forget that Ashiwa Jubola met Nobu. That is where the party leadership came into. It, it might be an informal thing, but it's somebody that you cannot discontinence. His, um, um, his strength, his effort, his, um, what will I put it, his place in that political party. Now, the, end, the last NUWC members uh, that were actually dissolved, 85 to 90% of them belong to the Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinobu camp. And a lot of people see this that, look, it is not creating a level playing field that if that is dissolved, that and a, com a convention will be will, the a convention committee will set up, and every man should now come in a level playing field and actually go for co the convention, which is slated sometimes maybe before the end of the year or January for the APC to actually have their convention. What we are saying here is that the governor of Yobe State, seeing him as a major stakeholder in that entity or progressive congress. There's nothing to get legitimacy that this caretaker committee they can do without the input of Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinobu. Not even the fiat of the president can actually discontinence the the contribution of Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinobu in that party. So what we are looking at here, we are looking at the governor's block, the caretaker committee realizing that look, we can do close to nothing without consulting this man. And when you look at the composition of the caretaker committee, you understand what I'm saying, that he also has a lot, they went a, it went a long way in taking some of his own people there so mm -hmm. that it's not going to be skewed in any other faction. The contending the people there within the All Progressive Congress, they're going to have that day because there's a level playing field now ahead of the next delegate conference that they're going to choose the new NWC member. So there's a level playing field in the All, All Progressive Congress People are expected to go to the field now, and there's going to be like a presidential election before presidential election in the next convention. So the person that will determine who gets the chairman, gets all the exco members, and some of these things, the composition will go a long way to tell you to have an idea of the camp that might be getting the presidential ticket of the All Progressive Congress. It's getting very, very interesting, Yuri. Indeed. And I think we have to go to a break. So I won't ask you any more questions beyond that. But thank you very much, uh, Ayo, uh, for coming on and um, putting this uh, insight of analysis to the matter. Thank you very much. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. And um, changing gear a bit now, uh, in fact, more than a bit, uh, going on to another subject entirely, um, it's, it's all about litigation. And if you go back to the political scenario that we experienced in Edo State, for example, that was the latest occurrence of it, where you have courts, uh, as our lawyer, you know, our uh, friends put it, courts of concurrent jurisdiction issuing contradictory orders. You know, one court will say this and another court will say exactly, you know, uh, the opposite of that, thereby creating log jams. Now, we, we, we're joined by uh, Mr. Um, daily addition of former MBA Ikeja uh, chair. Uh, good morning and thank you very much uh, for joining us. Mr. Adishina. Good morning, my brother. Okay. How are you? Uh, uh, we're wondering, uh, well, first of all, people have been saying that it's an issue, lawyers have been annoyed about the matter, much less uh, uh, ordinary people in the society. So how, how, how can this be happening? Um, now people are saying, is it time for the MBA to see what it could do uh, to, to, to resolve this situation where lawyers will go to court apparently legitimately and the courts apparently legitimately will be issuing these orders, but when you look at what's on the table, you now have contradictions. Can the MBA come in on this matter? Thank you very much. I love the choice of your language. Two times you use the word legitimately. Now, first of all, jurisprudentially, let me try to situate some 
fundamental philosophies behind judgment. Number one, the lawyers that are handling the matter are presenting two different sides to the case. Two different propositions, legal arguments, and what have you. The judge that will sit down are going to consider, the judges are going to consider the arguments and then take a position. As much as it is unhelpful for two courts of concurrent jurisdiction to give conflicting and contradictory judgment, we have to give allowance to a lot of factors. One, these two judges may belong to two schools of jurisprudence. In law, there is what we call sociological school of jurisprudence. That school believes that law is made for man and not man for the law. There is also the legal school, the legal theory school of jurisprudence, who believe that justice must be done according to law, even if heavens will fall. In some instances, you find these two poles, situations conflicting with each other. And so this may be the reason for the contradictory judgments that you have. If the two judges do not belong to the same schools of jurisprudence, may have different reactions and different interpretations mm -hmm. to the same law. Mm -hmm. I... Now, but the, but the system has not left us without a solution. Okay, okay. God has, there has never been a temptation that God has not made a way out from. So the system has made a way out of a situation like this. And that is why we have different hierarchy, of course, in Nigeria. Indeed, all over the world. You have the court of first instance at the high court. You have the middle court, which is the court of appeal. And you have the final court, which is the Supreme Court. For those that are not pleased with the judgment of the high court, like a situation you have just painted, they can make recourse to the court of appeal. The court of appeal is superior to the high court. They will resolve the conflict. And assuming these three persist, there will be a recourse to the final court of the land. And the decision of that final court remains binding on all the courts and the citizens. Are you getting me? Very well. As to what, at, yes, as to whether the Nigerian Bar Association can do anything about this, I will answer yes, without any reservation. You see, as far as the practice of law is concerned, as far as administration of justice is concerned in the land, the Bar Association is a catalyst to ensure that things are done properly. The Bar Association can intervene in the situation that we have just painted, for example, by putting together a summit, bringing judges of different schools of thought together, mm -hmm. including legal practitioners together, and the beneficiaries, the politicians, the businessmen, the non-politicians, and then sit down to extract our justice administration in Nigeria. That is a veritable approach. Mm. The Bar Association can also make what we call constructive criticism. The judgments of the courts are there. Once judgments are made, you can comment on the judgment, you can analyze on the judgment. <coughs> and the Bar Association can also intervene by promoting what we call legal journalism through publication of journals by the association itself, as we have done before before it was abandoned, or through individuals setting up legal journals, they will sit down, they will constructively criticize a judgment. Okay. It is allowed anywhere in the world. Mm, mm. You know, this thank is some of the ways the NBA can promote justice. Thank, thank, thank you very much for that um, sort of dissertation, as it were, because it, it does give a valuable insight into what is going on. Um, uh, uh, those that are unlearned, as uh, lawyers like to refer to the rest of society, um, would, without the benefit of this explanation, not have understood it. And you could understand why some were speaking of terms such as uh, judicial rascality. But you've just explained it. Look, at the end of the day, it is the sole preserve of the judge to come up with a decision 
based on all the facts before him or her. And you've explained that there are different types of judges. So you gave us a sociological perspective. You gave us a legalistic perspective. Uh, so it, it looks like this is the way the law is. And uh, I don't know that anybody wants to change anything, as it were, by, uh, by fiat. Uh, because we, we often hear of um, judges that are, you know, that, that, that are disposed in a certain sort of a way. Uh, judges that uh, lawyers know them. They know the leanings of the judges, and they know that their word is final anyway, subject to the um, modifications that you have made. So it looks like this is a part of, part of the whole codification of the laws, and um, quite frankly, it's a system that is being worked. Yeah. Yes, do I come in here? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you very much. I must add that there is a movement away from the legal theory school of jurisprudence okay. to sociological school. And we have a plethora of examples set by the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Lawyers will tell you that emphasis of technicalities are no longer the order of the day. The likes of Justice Uputa. Justice Kyle Justice Nikitobi, these are people who left footprint on the sand of time as far as justice is concerned in this land. I would like to mention the names of some of the justices that are still sitting in our appellate courts so as not to be seen as patronizing. Hmm. But I can tell you too that there is a movement away from legal theory. And that is why the refrain today is that technical justice is no longer justice. The law must serve the society. And this is where public advocacy also must be part of the contributions of Nigerian Bar Association's leadership. You know, there have to be timely comments by the leadership of the association to say, this is the way, what you need. This is not the way. Let us depart from there. Maybe. Again, we must hasten, yes, I must hasten to cancer that justice according to law may not be the same as justice according to social media. Okay. Oh, okay. Because Indeed. Nothing, yes, nothing, nothing guides the rationalization in the social media other than sentiments of the writers. But the judges and common in sense. our courtroom... And common sense, the way we see it. Yes, thank you very much. Common sense, the way we see it, which can be a totally different the thing. Totally. In most cases, totally. Because the judges must not only look at common sense, emotions. In fact, they must go away from emotions. <laughs> they must look at the provisions of the law. They must also look at precedents. They must also look at precedent. Yes. So where a similar case has been decided in few, I mean before, a judge of first instance cannot depart from it, even if he does not agree with the judgment. Okay. Unless he can carefully distinguish that one is different from the other. Okay. One moment, please. You know, uh, one moment, please. Uh, one moment, please, Mr. Dishina. Uh Joshua in Irewale has called in, and um, if you have an observation, go ahead, please. Okay, we are a good morning and uh, good morning to your uh, guests. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to say that uh, we, we are in a, in a world where it is easy to get educated and to get informed. I think what is going on in Nigeria, some people may call it uh, judicial rascality. Me, I call it uh, judicial corruption. You see, we are elevating the art of deception into a statecraft. That is what we're doing uh, in the judiciary. Yes, I understand what he's saying about the leaning of judges to certain, uh, uh, certain beliefs and all that. But the point is that justice should be served in one direction. The particular people that are getting this duplicate or duplicity of just, justice are politicians. They have money. Hmm. This is corruption. They are paying for these uh, judgments that they are obtaining. When you go to one high court, 
This one gives the, this injunction, that one gives a contrary one. What happened there? It was paid for. This well, thing it are not difficult uh, uh, to, to handle. Okay, th they should know that we are listening and we are watching. See, it is time for us to straighten out things in Nigeria. Judgment obtained by payment is not justice. Okay, so we should go back much, to Mr. doing Joshua. things the right way. Mm -hmm. your... Okay, thank you very much for your contribution. Not that we can prove very much of how you concluded the matter. But I did, you, you had my sympathies and I was going to present them to Mr. Deshi, you know, that uh, it, it, it looks like when you said that justice should have a sort of a universal application where everybody can know what to expect of justice. But I, uh, I expect that, Mr. Adish, you know, um, I, I, I could then throw the question to you that, look, when we come to justice, is it more of an art than a science? Because if it were a science, then it's not going to be changing uh, depending on the disposition of whoever is administering it. Uh, but if it's an art, there's plenty of room for interpretation. Mr. Adishina. Thank you very much. Don't, don't think that the disposition of the judge determines what the judgment is going to be. I've made some preliminary introduction. Now, I would like to react directly to Mr. Irene Wale's uh, uh, intervention. Uh, uh, Joshua, in come calling uh, in from Irene Wale. Joshua, okay. the name is Mr. Uh, Mr. Joshua. Joshua uh, yes. Okay. Mr. Joshua, yes, I listened to you, and I share your sentiment that some of these things may be traceable to some ulterior motives, other than the parameters that are painted, which are purely scientific and jurisprudential. Now, a corrupt judiciary is not a judiciary that any nation will want. Mm -hmm. But it is also very important to be armed with our facts in order to substantiate our allegations. If we have 10 judges and eight of them are corrupt, by all means, we must get all the eight people out of the system. They must not be allowed to stay there for one day. Two things destroy nations' judiciary, corruption, and lack of knowledge, which they call ignorance. Somebody said an ignorant judge is worse than a murderer. I will say a corrupt judge is worse than a murderer. But you see, I agree with you that some of these things may be ill motivated. But we who are in the system and those of close observers like you. We must set up mechanisms that we fish out information and we comfort individuals that may be involved, the politicians themselves, the judge himself, and the lawyers involved. We must bring out facts and information to say this is what happened. And the system has a mechanism to throw away the, you know, those that are misbehaving. Indeed. But I must send a note of warning here, sir. And that one is this. We must be careful not to use the standard of the minority to judge the majority in our judicial system, which is what we are seeing today in this country. If you have a country with about 200 judges, and you have 20 or 10 or 5 that have been proven to be corrupt, you cannot judge the entire judges of 200 with the standard of the five that has that have misbehaved. And Mr. Adishino, I, I want to, Mr. Adishino, I, I, I have to interrupt at this stage. Uh, that was a, that's a fine place at which to leave it. And, and I want to thank you very much uh, for the enlightenment that you have um, shared with us uh, on this subject uh, uh, matter. It's a big subject. Uh, the whole matter about can the MBA not come into it, you indeed have shown that the MBA can come into it. But as to whether there can be a quick fix yes. between now and next week, uh, well, you didn't give any indication that that uh, was possible, and I, I think it is doubtful myself personally. But you have shown the ways in which the MBC, I beg your pardon, the MBA could indeed uh, come to bear on, on the situation. Thank you once again, uh, Mr. Adishina, for your insights. Thank you very much. All right, Thank then. you very much. All right, then.
So, okay, we'll, we'll take a break now. Stay with us, please. Okay, welcome back. And um, to Nigerians who travel a lot, and there are quite a few of them that travel, uh, when you talk about hush puppies, they would have thought of maybe, you know, a particular shoe brand. Uh, but we're not talking about the shoe brand at all. Uh, hush puppy, other Nigerians will know, is actually a name on Instagram. Uh, well, uh, he's a very affluent kind of a person. Um, you know, it shows on his Instagram page. And uh, lo and behold, now the U.S. have gotten hold of him, and he shall be answering charges. But we have a report that will put it much better. The disclosure was made in a statement by the Dubai police, in which the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigations extended its gratitude to the UAE crime watchdog for its role in apprehending and extraditing the two suspects. Described as an international online scammer, Hush Puppy Woodbury and 10 others were arrested in an operation tagged Fox Hunt after they were arrested of committing crimes, which include money laundering, cyber fraud, hacking, criminal impersonating, scamming individuals, banking fraud, and identity theft. They reportedly created fake pages for existing websites in order to redirect victims' payments to their own accounts. The gang hacked corporate emails and sent fake messages to clients in order to redirect financial transfers and people's bank details to their own accounts. The raid that led to his arrest resulted in the confiscation of incriminating documents of a planned fraud on a global scale worth $435 million. Who goes by Hush Puppy on social media platforms? 21 personal computers, 47 smartphones, 15 flash drives, and five hard disks were seized from him. 1,926,400 victims were allegedly scammed by Hush Puppy and his gang. Okay, so uh, there, there are a lot of people, especially if you're on social media, that already know of, sorry, of a hush puppy. But the way you're shaking your head, is zero. gives me the impression that um, this is news to you. It's not news. Okay. I, 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 I think that um, these persons are the exact opposite of the kind of example Nigerian youths, you know, um, deserve to have. Um, long before now, those who perhaps were in the know, you know, would tell you about the glowing, the glory, as it were, of these people who are making it big, in quotes, making it big, and who were living large and living free. Uh, I, I, I recall that some time ago, the chairman of the EFCC, the acting chairman, actually said that, there, that this thing about online fraud in Nigeria had gone to a point where he pointed to two things. He said, one, there was a Yahoo Yahoo Mothers Association of Nigeria, Mothers of Yahoo Boys. You know, they now have a, have, have a union and how they globalize their, their enterprise activities. He also talked about the discovery of a Yahoo Academy in Calabar, where people were being trained on how to become Yahoo. Best. So clearly, Nigerian youth are beginning to, so, some, some people are beginning to see this as a good alternative, you know, as an alternative way to live. Or stupendous wealth, something you don't work for. You sit, you sit down at the back of a com in, in, behind a computer or a phone, and you can reach the world and defraud anybody anywhere. The good thing is that, first of all, it's, it's welcoming to see that they've been arrested, that they were in a place where the police had the capacity and the willingness and the will to actually arrest them, which has been done, and that they've gone to a place where there will be no cause of coordinated jurisdiction given conflicting hey, injunctions, but you see, that yes. justice will be done. I wonder what, con what sort of conscience somebody will have storing their addresses of up to nearly two million victims. Exactly. Uh, um, but it also speaks to uh, we ourselves, social media in Nigeria. Um, I imagine they have more than, more than a couple of hundred followers. And why are we so gullible? Even people in society, uh, that is to say people who are not riffraffs, uh, follow these guys. They, they, they have this unbelievable lifestyle, exotic cars galore, not one Rolls Royce, all these kind. You, you saw an indication of it. I, I just don't know. Now, if you're a musician or you're a film star or whatever, at least people have an idea of, okay, we, we can see where, so, so to speak, your shop is. We know. But when people don't have any visible means of income, and are living large, and are getting followers. 
Nigerians are admiring. They, they, they scourge, if I will call it that. You know, you see, the, the scourge of cybercrime in Nigeria goes beyond this. This is just a tip of the iceberg. Somebody was talking to me, was, we were in a group discussion, and the person said, don't you see this Nigerian musician that sang a song condemning a popular artist, sang a song condemning cyber fraud, condemning online criminality, and the public, the public came for him. The public pushed him to a point where he had to sing a reverse song, dissociating himself from the earlier ones and condemning cybercrime and fraud. So what are we talking about? We can begin to look at, we can, we can, we can understand. Is that the uh, Ramoni Abbas, Abbas? A.K.A. Hush Hush Puppy. A.K.A. Hush Puppy. <laughs> he just went Hush and destroyed that, that brand. I think it's a British brand, <laughs> the, the Hush Puppy shoe. But he's adopted it. Maybe he didn't even know it was a brand before he took it. But um, because oftentimes you don't know the origin of names. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know. This is a, it's a, it's a big embarrassment to Nigeria. Um, but thank God that he's been apprehended. When I say it's a big embarrassment to Nigeria, I mean, he's been operating on a daily basis on social media until the very end. Did you see? Until the very, very end. And again, if you look at the, um, the sheer trend of discussions on social media again, there is, there is this sentiment of saying they are from a particular part of the country or belong to a particular religion or tribe. And the other people saying, okay, this is ours, this is yours, and they are trying to exchange. I think that the Nigerian mind needs to be rescued from the cesspit of perversion very early now. And this is not a joke. These sort of frauds have been going on for a very long time. Let us hear from Mazi or Mazi or in Arochuku. Uh, Mazi, uh, good morning. Uh, hopefully, good you, morning. you don't have too many hush puppy types around in Arochuku. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So, uh, people are here. What they're interested in is how to go to their farm and do their natural <laughs> job and go there and we'll finish. i come back in the evening. I'm going to take their uh, equities and uh, that's uh, uh, a soup or fresh food. That's all. Now, Mr. Yori, you say, uh, what we have now is that. Most of these boys that are intelligent, but they're looking at the wrong perspective, creating more problems for themselves and the next. You know what, what is happening now? Most of these international cases you see now, by the time they're getting, rejecting something and send you back, you go back and die on your, which is very, very risky to the, to the, to the person in question. That is why this, the best, all these boys doing all these things, they should be very, very careful. That is what foreign countries are doing now. They inject you one and leave you. Because they have not exactly because if they leave you and collect charges to come by the time you still come back to the square one to do the same thing. The best thing is they inject you one thing. Which is going on, which people are seeing people don't know. Because people are going there, they will tell they will tell what is happening, that people have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this because our youth, you know your computer literate, that should not warrant you to go. What is supposed to, to sit down and design your own at this website like this and make your more money? Very sneak. Indeed. Not a question of going to scam. Yeah. Into issues of where they say that financial aspect of issue. At the end of the day, you bring back bad names to the country, bad names to your family, yeah. and bad names to the society. At the end of the day, if somebody is going to that place for something good, they say, ah, you don't you see one of his issues from somebody, like, what is that? You have blocked the chances of others in future, which is very, very wrong. Indeed. Which yeah. is very, very wrong. But because people worship money and adore money, that's why it's all this with grab, 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 grab. You want to buy it, you want to buy it, you want to buy it, it's very, very bad. But the youth, they have to be very, very good. They have, you can't say that. Their parents are guardians. What are they doing? Exactly. You see your child at night, you will not sleep. You'll be scamming, scamming, scamming from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. When you, your father will be okay, the young person is sleeping till 2 a.m. the next day, the, 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 the next day, which is very wrong. Indeed. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. In the, parents, they have a lot of things to do. Thank you very much. Uh, parents have a lot to do. I don't know. Yeah, indeed. No, I didn't mean that I don't know about that sentiment. But um, I, I, the thing is, it's, 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 it's worrying that it's out there in the open. And then it speaks to our society as well, because these scammers, they take whatever is the profit of their scams and, you know, just, they, they're very frivolous and, and conspicuous in their consumption. Um, from time to time, you see on closed uh, network uh, social media like WhatsApp, somebody will send around uh, pictures of kids, you know, in, in quite frankly, especially in the north and in the south, of exotic lifestyles, the exotic cars. So it's, 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 it's consumed publicly 
Um, it's become something of a cult. And um, I just don't know what to the say. First thing we can said, now be pretending that this surprises us. Those things, those things are not hidden. They are, they are, they are on display. Mm. So when did the society become like that? I just don't want to go into moralizing or editorializing. But to now make as if we're surprised. It's, 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 it is, it is, it is, it is, it is distressing. And then it's a great difficulty. But we can put a peg to it and say that our value system. Yes, so, sorry to interrupt you. Let me take uh, Benga in Ekwaja as our last caller. Uh, good morning, Benga in Ekwaja. Yeah, good morning, thank Uncle you. Yori. Thank you, sir, for calling in. Good morning. Go yes, ahead, please. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I just want to chip one thing in. In all this, uh, yeah, in all these uh, um, hush puppies... Uh, scammers, issues. scammers. Mm. Yeah, all these scammers. These scammers. There is one thing that keeps coming to my mind. The fact that um, they are scamming here, cyber crime here and there. If Hush Puppy is held, I'm sure he's going to tell us about people that use him for money laundering. Considering the, the amount, the huge amount traced to his uh, accounts, I am sure, or let me say, I'm almost sure that okay. some politicians, some big men, some military guys are using this guy as a cover-up. Money laundering issue cannot be ruled out of horse puppies, uh, mm. all these horse puppies. Mm. That's all I want to say. All right, Thank then. you very much. Thank you very much. And the fact that you know I was talking about the brand hush puppy, well, he spells his with an I instead of a Y. The last letter is, a, is an I instead of a Y. Uh, but uh, we, we've, we've just about run out of time, we are told. And, um, you know, I don't know very... It's, it's a very distasteful story, but the, 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 the uh, a, a, a sort of satisfying aspect of this is that they've caught him. He's in the U.S., I believe. Now the FBI will do what they do best, probably present all the information they have before a judge. And uh, I don't know whether the... Well, again, we can't, we can't, we, we, we can't talk, we've just been speaking with a lawyer. So a person is innocent, is considered innocent until proven otherwise. But if they ever get to Nigeria to seek for support, I think we should give them all the support that they would need. And we've got to leave it on that note. I thank you very much, uh, Sil Abaku. And indeed, thank you very much to all our callers, especially our resource people today that, you know, shared enlightenment with us. That's our program. Uh, please join us on Monday, the weekend. We don't do weekend editions of this morning. Um, and please, as we always say, stay safe. Cyril has come, and so Cyril and I say stay safe, please, over the weekend. See you on Monday. God willing.